that God has designed for me. Does that stand to reason? I think it does. Follow Jesus. The one thing that stands out in Jesus' ministry and in the ministries of people that I respect and have known in over the years of my being saved, and the truth that I see borne out in the scripture over and over again, is that ministry flows from within. <clears throat> you don't go to Bible school to get maturity. You don't go to Bible school to get wisdom. You go to Bible school to get equipment. And as you take the equipment and begin to put it to work, the working out of the equipment, as, as a soldier learns in boot camp how to use his gun, he only gains battle experience when he gets into the fight. The principle is this. Doing flows from being. Say that with me. Doing flows from being. Now James teaches us that in his epistle. He said, you're saved, you say you're saved only by being. But James says, I say that if you don't have some doing coming out of your being, 
that your being is dead. Or seat. Huh? You wanted a better seat. <laughs> have you ever have you ever looked at somebody that you really admired and wished that you could just get inside of them and find out what makes them tick? Huh? What makes that person tick? <coughs> The Holy Spirit in one verse concisely wraps up the what makes Jesus tick. What made him imagine one being Having all laid aside his guard. No, turned around and going wrong. You know, there's some people that won't do anything, and then there's other people that want to do all everything by themselves. That he had come forth from God. What's happened in your life and what's happened in your past. Jesus is going to. You know something, God.
Lord Jehovah, we thank you, Lord, for your presence here. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the anticipation of being with you and in you with this day hold. And Lord, as we lay hands upon this cup that you will ordain before the beginning of time. Jesus, we ask for your touch upon their lives, your touch upon their ministry. I see a great ministry to you, Lord. To those who are crying out, Lord, and asking questions, who have been trying to achieve more, but have an emptiness inside. And I see, Lord, sending these two out in a powerful ministry to the youth, Lord, in this, in this nation. We we'll need you, Jesus. Yeah. Lord, Father, we do no longer need to go, Lord, overseas to the great countries of the world, Lord, Father. We know that, Father, you have sent missionaries here to minister to the youth here in America. Father, that's what I see for this coming. Jesus, I ask that you would just touch them right now and bless them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, to bless the Holy Spirit, to invite them in the new. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of standing, Lord, and being ministered by them as we all do. And Father, I ask right now that you would touch them in anticipation of what you are about to do. For the great harvest that's going to occur. Father, thank you. We are going to be a part of it. These two are going to be a major part of it. In Jesus' name. people of this generation that will touch the nations of the earth. We consecrate that we lay hands upon Bob and Becky tonight for the ministry you have for them. We thank you that you make no mistakes in your kingdom. And in your wise providence you have brought them together, Lord. And may they walk in agreement walk in agreement all the days of their lives or that they might bring forth fruit and fruit that shall remain. Let that be anointing upon them, Lord, for, for ministry, not only to youth, but to others as well, Lord. To draw them unto, into an intimacy and a relationship with you that they never had before. That they may know in truth who they are and to whom they belong. Your God will meet their every need as they trust you.
Stir up the gift of God that is within you. Amen. amen. Days, days of God ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Pastor Joe would like to close here with what he had the Lord laid upon us. Sorry. I feel the Lord wants me to share with you uh, the most important verse in the whole Bible. As I think back when I first heard it, and I don't know everybody here, and perhaps they never heard the most important verse in the whole Bible. I'm sure most of you know what it is. And perhaps you heard it but don't understand it. It's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And I found out when I was 31 years old what it meant to believe in Jesus. A man came to me and shared the gospel personally. And he said, Joe, to believe in Jesus is to receive him receive the person of Jesus, to receive the Holy Spirit, and that's when you're born again. Jesus came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. I believe God is speaking to at least one person here tonight, and I don't know that person, but I would pray that you would receive him. Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <coughs> Salvation is so simple, so easy. Salvation is a gift. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of worse, that any man should boast. So I would encourage you to receive the gift. The gift of God is Jesus. And Jesus is salvation. To be saved is to have Jesus live in your heart. Amen. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. So, to believe in Jesus, and I encourage you, if you've never received Jesus, to receive him. Invite him into your heart and life. He's a 
thank you tonight for your presence. Amen. May we all realize, Lord, it is your presence in us that can make the difference in the world because we are the salt of the earth. Lord, help us to be real salt. Help us to let our light so shine before men. Lord, that our good works may glorify our Father who is in heaven. But whatever ministry we may be involved in, whether it be feeding the poor, clothing the naked, caring for the orphans, caring for the widows, whatever it may be, Lord, we might remember that our focus is in preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. For the gospel is a power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And Lord, we send forth tonight these who have been partially trained, Lord. They haven't arrived yet. We all have much to learn. Yes, Lord. But this is one step on their Christian pilgrimage, Lord. Hallelujah. One step of a, coming to a place of being equipped for the ministry. Yes. And Lord, we thank you for each life. We thank you for each family here tonight, each family member and friend who has come to join with us in this glorious celebration. We thank you that your presence here tonight doesn't leave us, but goes with us, because indeed you live in us, and it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. That a brother has so, has so said tonight that it is Jesus in us, that what is in us ministers to people. Lord, may we minister out of a pure heart, glory of God and to bring souls into your kingdom. So bless us tonight and make us a blessing. We go with your peace and your love in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen.
Settled now. First babies are late. Great right grandma. December. My mom's a 28. Oh, oh, yeah. He's making that on Justin, there. Uh, what's Justin? Left for wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How are y'all? Or yeah. something. Tell us some oh, stories. Yeah. Come, Bunny. Thank you, everybody. See how the traffic is. Stop and wake up. Thank you. 